Our objective for this lesson is to solve for the mean and the variance of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. Arrange the steps in creating sampling distribution of the sample means from 1 to 4. So first, we have to determine the number of sets of all possible random samples. Number two, we have to list all the possible random samples and solve for the sample mean of each set of samples. Number three, we have to construct a frequency and probability distribution table of the sample means. And number four, we have to draw the histogram of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Here are the steps in solving for the mean and variance of sampling distribution of the sample means. I will discuss this one by one with an example. Let's start. The number of students with high honors from five sections are 3, 5, 2, 4, and 6. Suppose three sections were selected as samples, determine the mean and variance of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Step 1. Compute the population mean using the formula mu is equal to summation of x over n. Let us rewrite the formula. Summation of x, meaning you just have to add all the x's here, and then divide it by your population size. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So divide it by 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 4 is 14, plus 6 is 20. Divided by 5 is equal to 4. We now have the population mean. There is another way of solving this. I'll show you in step 2. Compute the population variance using the formula. Variance is equal to the summation of quantity x minus mu squared all over n. This table is already familiar to you. We use this when we discuss mean and variance of discrete random variable. So for our x, this is where we list down our data. In this particular example, the number of high honors per section. So we have 3, 5, 2, 4, and 6. And then we have to add this up and this will give us 20. From here, we can already compute for the population mean. This is the summation of x over n. And summation of x is equal to 20 divided by our n, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. Same answer that we get from step 1. Now we can proceed with our second column. x minus mu. Our x is 3 minus our mu is 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Whatever is your answer here, simply square for the third column. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Next x, we have 5 minus our mu is 4, and that is equal to 1. And 1 squared is still 1. Next, we have 2 minus 4, and that is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Next, we have 4 minus 4, that is 0. 0 squared is still 0. And then we have 6 minus 4, that is 2. And 2 squared is equal to 4. And then after that, we have to add all of this. 1 plus 1 is 2. Plus 4 is 6. Plus 0 is still 6. Plus 4 is 10. Is this already the variance? No, not yet. We still have to divide it by n. And our n, again, is equal to 5. So we have 10 divided by 5. And this will give us 2. So the variance of our population is equal to 2. I will introduce another formula to get the variance. And this is summation of x squared all over n minus mu squared. We already have the n. We already have the mu. Then we have to compute for the summation of x squared. We have here the x. We simply have to square each value here like this. 3 is squared is 9, 5 is squared is 25, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36. And then sum it up, 
and it will give you 90. So the summation of x squared is equal to 90. We're going to substitute this in our numerator, and then our n is equal to 5, and our mu is equal to 4. 90 divided by 5 is equal to 18. 4 is squared is equal to 16. 18 minus 16 is equal to 2. Same answer. Step 3, determine the number of possible samples. So let us recall our population and our sample size. I hope you still remember our formula in determining the number of possible samples. Our n again here is the population size and our n here is the sample size. Let me reiterate that this formula is for sampling without replacement. So let us substitute 5 for our capital N and 3 for our small letter N. This is 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is 3 factorial. 3 times 2 times 1. 5 minus 3 is 2. So this is 2 factorial. 2 times 1. We can now cancel 3 times 2 times 1. And we can simplify 4 divided by 2. So this will become 2. For the numerator, we have 5 times 2. That is 10 divided by 1. 10 divided by 1 is equal to 10. So we have 10 possible samples. Step 4, list all possible samples and compute their corresponding means. Let us recall our population as well as our sample size. Let's have our table. This time, our sample is 3 at a time. Let us start. We have 3, 5, 2, 3, 5, 4, 3, 5, 6, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 6, 3, 4, 6, 5, 2, 4, 5, 2, 6, 5, 4, 6, and 2, 4, 6. Let us count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 possible samples. For the sample mean, we just have to add our samples and then divide it by 3 because we have 3 samples. So 3 plus 5 plus 2 divided by 3 is equal to 3.33. 3 plus 5 plus 4 divided by 3 is equal to 4. 3 plus 5 plus 6 divided by 3 is equal to 4.67. 3 plus 2 plus 4 divided by 3 is equal to 3. 3 plus 2 plus 6 divided by 3 is equal to 3.67. Next, we have 3 plus 4 plus 6 divided by 3 is equal to 4.33. 5 plus 2 plus 4 divided by 3 is equal to 3.67. 5 plus 2 plus 6 divided by 3 is equal to 4.33. 5 plus 4 plus 6 divided by 3 is equal to 5. And 2 plus 4 plus 6 divided by 3 is equal to 4. Let's continue. Step 5, construct the sampling distribution of the sample means. To do this, we have to recall our answer in number 4. So we are going to arrange our sample means in ascending order. So we'll start with 3, followed by 3.33, and then we have 3.67, and then we have 4, and then we have 4.33, 4.67, and then 5. Now for the frequency, we just have to look how many times this sample mean occur in this table. So for 3, we only have once. For 3.33, just once. For 3.67, we have 1, 2. For 4, we also have 2, 1, 2. For 4.33, we also have 2. 1, 2. For 4.67, we just have 1. And for 5, only once. And then let us get the total. 1 plus 1 is 2. Plus 2, 4. Plus 2, 6. Plus 2, 8. Plus 1, 9. Plus 1, 10. 
For the probability, we simply have to get the frequency divided by the total. So this is 1 over 10 or 0.1, also 0.1, 2 over 10 or 0.2, also 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. To check, let us add all our probabilities. It should be equal to 1. 0.1 plus 0.1 is 0.2. Plus 0.2 is 0.4. Plus 0.2 is 0.6. Plus 0.2 is 0.8. Plus 0.1 is 0.9. Plus 0.1 is 1. Our probability distribution is correct. Next step. This time, we are going to solve for the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means. So, we have this formula. We already have the sample means and its corresponding probabilities. Now, we need the product of the sample mean and its corresponding probability. So, we just have to multiply these two. So, 3 times 0.1 is equal to 0 0.3. 3.33 times 0.1 is 0 0.33. 3.67 times 0.2 is 0 0.73. 4 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.80. 4.33 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.87. 4.67 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.47. And 5 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.5. And then we add all of this and this will give us 4. This is now our mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Recall our previous lesson, it says there that the mean of all sample means is equal to the population mean. In step 1, we have already solved for the population mean and it is equal to 4. Now, we were able to solve the mean of all sample means and it is equal to 4 as well. So, 4 is equal to 4. So, this is correct. Last step, step 7, compute the variance of the sampling distribution of the sample means. So I have here the sample means and its corresponding probabilities. Let's take a look at our formula. We need sample mean minus mu. I'll put it here. We also need the square of the sample mean minus mu. I'll put it here. And the product of the probability of the sample mean times the square of the sample mean minus mu. I'll put it here. Let us recall our mu from the first step and that is equal to 4. Let's start. Our first sample mean is 3 minus our mu is 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Whatever is the answer here, simply square and that will be your answer in the fourth column. So negative 1 is squared is positive 1. And then your answer here, multiply with the second column. Because it says here, probability of sample mean. It is the second column. Times the square of the sample mean minus mu, which is the fourth column. So when you get your answer here, multiply it with its probability. So, 0.1 times 1 will give you 0.1. Next, our sample mean is 3.33. Minus our mu is 4. That will give us negative 0 0.67. Square this and it will give you 0 0.4489. And then multiply this with the probability 0 0.1. And it will give you 0 0.044. Nine, rounded off to four decimal places. Next, 3.67 minus 4 will give you negative 0 0.33. Square this and it will give you 0 0.1089. Multiply this with 0 0.2 and it will give you 0 0.0218. Next, 4 minus 4 is 0. A square of 0 is still 0. 0 multiplied by 0 0.2 is still 0. Next, 4.33 minus 4 is 0 0.33. A square that and it will give you 0 0.1089. Multiply this with 0 0.2 and it will give you 0 0.0218. Next one, 4.67 minus 4 
will give you 0 0.67. Square this and it will give you 0 0.4489. Multiply this with its probability 0 0.1 and it will give you 0 0.0449. Last sample mean 5 minus 4 is equal to 1. Square of this is also 1. Multiplied by 0.1 is 0.1. And then sum it up, it will give you 0 0.3334. There is another formula for computing the variance of the sampling distribution of the sample means. We need the population variance. We have computed this in step 2 and this is equal to 2. Our population size is equal to 5 and our sample size is equal to 3. Now let us substitute these values in our formula. Let us simplify this one first. 5 minus 3 is 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. We can cancel it with 4 here. So what remains in the numerator is 1 divided by 3 is 1 over 3. In decimal, this is 0 0.333, non-terminating. They are equal. This 4 here is just because of the rounding off. Gets. For the summary, again, here are the steps of computing the mean and the variance of the sampling distribution of the sample means. I also included the formula for computing the variance for sampling with replacement. Our next lesson is defining sampling distribution of the sample mean for normal distribution.